Hi, and welcome to the Insight My Life channel. So we're continuing our series on the Exam P Society of Actuaries published questions. So today we're going over question 324 and 325. So take a moment, pause the video, and read through this question, and we're going to be covering it in the next slide. Okay, so we're going to recall the formula that we need here. So the the coefficient of variation is equal to the standard deviation divided by the mean. And so the problem also states that the expected value of x and the expected value of y are the same, are they equal the same thing. So we're going to let that be equal to mu. Next, they tell us that the coefficient of variation for both of these is 3 and 4, respectively. So our goal is to find the coefficient of variation for one half of x plus y. So in order to find the coefficient of variation, we have to know the mean of this and the standard deviation of this. So this is a sum of random variables. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our expected value of one half of x plus y, and we're going to take the standard deviation of 1 half times x plus y. And recall that standard deviation is the same thing as the square root of the variance. So when we take our expected value of 1 half x plus y, all we need to do is distribute that 1 half to both x and y. And recall that with the expected value, if you are taking the expected sum of random variables, then you can split it up and say 1 half times the expected value of x plus 1 half times the expected value of y. And then let's recall also that our expected value of x and expected value of y are the same thing, which is mu. So 1 half mu plus 1 half mu is mu. Now let's take a look at the variance. So for the variance of 1 half x plus y, we're going to do the same thing, distribute our 1 half to the x plus y. Now there's a subtle difference here with the variance. When you have a, uh, a factor that's modifying your random variable inside the variance, then you have to pull it out and square it. So you can see that we have the variance of 1 half x plus the variance of 1 half y is actually 1 fourth times the variance of x plus 1 fourth times the variance of y. And so now, the real question that we have to ask is what in the world is the variance of x and the variance of y? So in order to figure this out, we have to think backwards given what they gave us in the initial question. So the coefficient of variation, recall, is the square root of the variance times the mean. And again, the square root of variance is standard deviation. So earlier, they gave us the coefficient of variations or coefficients of variation for x and y. So we have that information. So what we need to do is take that and put it back into this formula that you see below. So the coefficient of variation, if we rearrange this, we can actually take the coefficient of variation times the mean all squared, and that will equal the variance. And that's just taking this equation and rearranging it in terms of variance, which is what we're trying to solve. So now, going back to what we're trying to solve originally is the one-fourth of the variance x and one-fourth times the variance of y. So the variance of x, therefore, taking the formula that we had earlier, where I'm getting 3 mu squared and 4 mu squared for the variance of x and the variance of y, respectively. So just take the formula that I had in the previous slide and apply that to the coefficient of variations that are given and you're going to get these two, uh, two formulas, 3 mu and 4 mu uh, squared. So now, if we carry through with our algebra, we're going to get our 9 mu squared, 16 mu squared over 4, and do a little simplification here. We get 25 over 4 times mu squared, and that's equal to the variance of 1 half x plus y. So be careful here, this is still the variance. What we actually need, though, is the standard deviation. So in order to get there, we're going to take the square root of our answer, so the square root of 25 over 4 times mu squared, 
and we're dividing it by the mean. And this is in order to get the coefficient of variation. Recall again that it's the standard deviation divided by the mean. So we're taking the square root of our variance that we found, dividing it by the mean, and we get a final answer of 5 halves because our mu's cancel out. Okay, and now for question 325, this one's pretty straightforward. Once you can do the previous one, it should be a little bit easier. So for the variance of z, what we're going to do is we're going to take the variance of all the random variables that are being summed here. So we have the variance of 3x plus 2y minus 5. And we're going to split the variance up into these three pieces. Now, I kind of skipped a few steps here because we're borrowing some concepts from the previous problem. But recall that with the variance of the sum of random variables, you're just basically summing the variance of each component. So you're doing the variance of 3x plus the variance of 2y plus the variance of 5. So uh, it doesn't matter in this particular case, but recall also that when you do the variance of uh, something that's, say, minus 5 in this case, you're actually still going to do it as plus the variance of 5. But it doesn't matter because the variance of a number, a constant, is 0 because constants don't vary, right? That's kind of how I, I think about it. So when we take the variance of 3x, recall that the 3 comes out and becomes squared, so we have 3 squared times the variance of x, and the same thing happens to the 2, so we get 2 squared variance of y, and then replace our variance of x and variance of y with what was given, and we'll get 9 times 3 and 4 times 4 is 43. All right, guys, thank you for watching, and stay tuned for more videos from the Society of Actuaries published exam sample questions.